In the mid-20th century, Afghanistan was not much different from countries like Greece or Italy. King Zahir Shah ruled Afghanistan for a long time. He was not particularly fond of change and progress, and therefore, in 1973, he was overthrown by Muhammad Daud. Daud ruled until 1978, but did not implement the promised reforms and only worsened the political situation which caused even more discontent in the country. On April 28, 1978, army officers influenced by Marxist ideology staged a coup known as the Sour Revolution. The main instigators of the coup were officers from the army and the air force. As a result of the coup, Muhammad Daud was killed along with his family members, and Nur Muhammad Taraki came to power. He immediately proclaimed a course towards socialism and communism and received financial and economic support from the Soviet Union. A year later, in 1979, he was overthrown by Hafizullah Amin, one of the leaders of his own PDPA party. Amin did not like Marxist ideology and began secret negotiations with the United States to enter their sphere of influence. This became known to the Soviet leadership, and therefore, the storming of Amin's palace also known as Operation Storm 333, was conducted on December 27, 1979, by Soviet special forces with the aim of overthrowing and eliminating Afghan leader Hafizullah Amin. The operation was part of a broader Soviet plan to establish control in Afghanistan and begin military intervention in the civil war in that country. The reasons for the operation were suspicions by the Soviet leadership that Amin was negotiating with the USA and his unstable policies, which threatened Soviet influence in the region. The decision to conduct the operation was made in November 1979, after Amin demanded the replacement of the Soviet ambassador in Kabul. About 660 people participated in the storming, including KGB special units Grom and Zenit, as well as the 154th Separate Special Purpose Detachment of the GRU, Muslim Battalion. Amin was killed during the storming, and about 200 Afghan soldiers died, while Soviet losses amounted to 19 people. During the operation, a group of fighters disguised themselves in Afghan army uniforms for secrecy and seized key positions including palace guards and tanks dug in nearby. The active phase of the battle lasted about an hour, but shooting continued for another day. An interesting moment of the operation was the unsuccessful attempt to poison Amin before the storming, from which he was saved by Soviet doctors. This forced the Soviet leadership to take more decisive actions. Operation Storm 333 became a symbol of the beginning of the long and bloody Soviet-Afghan war, which lasted until 1989, and led to significant losses and changes in the region. The Soviet leadership brought Babrak Karmal from Czechoslovakia to Moscow and effectively appointed him as the new leader of Afghanistan. Soviet and Afghan television broadcast footage showing Babrak Karmal supposedly appealing to the Soviet leadership for help in deploying troops. In the Soviet Union, this action was presented as a fight against global imperialism, with claims that if Soviet troops did not enter Afghanistan, American troops would have. The Soviet Union conducted an unsuccessful mobilization, so they abandoned this idea and deployed regular conscript army units. The contingent of Soviet troops in Afghanistan was called the Limited Contingent of Soviet Troops in Afghanistan. Officially, it was stated on television that this was an international duty to help the brotherly Afghan people, and the soldiers fighting there were called internationalist warriors. Soviet television propaganda showed soldiers in Afghanistan building buildings, planting trees, and helping the Afghan people in peaceful life, categorically rejecting any rumors of military actions. Immediately after the introduction of the limited contingent, the Soviet Union began forming the 40th Army, which was based in Afghanistan. By the end of 1989, the army's maximum strength reached 115,000 troops. Despite the fierce resistance of the Afghan Mujahideen, supported by Saudi Arabia and the United States, Afghanistan was under complete Soviet control. The withdrawal of Soviet troops was caused by political changes in the Soviet Union and agreements reached by Mikhail Gorbachev with Western countries. This was not so much a direct military defeat as a political decision made by the Soviet leadership, 
At the time, the troops withdrew in a parade march with unfolded banners and combat columns, also having agreements with field commanders on the non-use of force during the withdrawal. The pro-Soviet regime of Najibullah lasted for three years and fell only after the complete cessation of any financial and economic assistance by Gorbachev's order.